and welcome to Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today's video is part of a series I do where I compare books with their movie adaptation. And before we get into the book and movie, I want to warn you that there will be spoilers for both, both the book and the movie. So if you plan on reading the book or watching the movie, you should do that first and then come back and watch this video. I also want to tell you that this is available as a podcast. I will link to Spotify and Apple down below because those are the two most popular platforms, but I am on other platforms as well. So these tend to be about 30 minutes, but especially if they're longer and it works better for you to listen to it, that is available. And I also want to say that even though my podcast is called Why the Book Wins, <laughs> I do love movies as well. And there are times where the movie wins when comparing book first movie. So it is not always the book because I do love movies. And oftentimes, you know, before I even started this podcast, the reason I would read a book was because I liked the movie. And so I wanted to read the book for it. And so I love both essentially. And I think I give a fair, you know, view of both book and movie, despite my name being why the book wins. <laughs> anyway, thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, let's get right into the book first movie. Hello and thank you again for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today we are here to talk about Matilda, which is a book written by Roald Dahl published in 1988. And then the movie Matilda was directed by Danny DeVito and was released in 1996. And this did win a poll I posted on my YouTube community page where I shared four different options and Matilda is the one that won. So definitely subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, that way you can stay up to date with what I am posting about and you can take part in what I cover and just be part of the community. And a super brief summary for those who don't know, Matilda is about a girl named Matilda who is very smart, but her parents neglect her and don't pay attention to how smart she is. And it's not until she is in school, her teacher, Miss Honey, notices that she has like the brain knowledge of like a 12 year old or something. However, when she goes to the principal and recommends Matilda be bumped up, the principal, Miss Trunchbull, who is a notoriously bad, evil person and very mean and hates children. She is like, uh, no, like I've heard about Matilda. Her dad told me about her and he said that she's, you know, a bad seed and you're just trying to get her out of your classroom and like have her be someone else's problem. And so she doesn't allow Matilda to move up in class. And Matilda, over time, she begins to have the power of telekinesis where she can lift things and move things. And at first this starts when she is upset because Miss, Miss Trunchbull is yelling at her. But over the course of the story, she uses this power to get revenge on Miss Trunchbull because she has taken Honey's home and they think that she had killed Honey's dad because Miss Trunchbull is Honey's aunt. Anyway, she uses her powers to scare Miss Trunchbull. She runs away, is never heard from again, and Miss Honey and Matilda live together happily ever after. And when I was a kid, I loved reading Roald Dahl. I read so many of his books and Matilda included, and I hadn't read one from him though since I was like really young, I don't know, like nine or something. So it was really fun to return to his writings and just bring back that nostalgia of being a kid in my room, reading his books over the summer. And Matilda in particular is a fantastic one for multiple reasons, but one reason being is that there are so many strong female characters in this book. We have Matilda, of course, we have Miss Honey. We even have the other student, um, her, Hortensia, who talks to Matilda and Lavender about all the ways she's, you know, gotten back and fought the system in regards to Miss Trunchbull. And she was a great character, even though her role is very small. And then even Miss Trunchbull though, having the villain be a woman too is unique. And so I just love that about this book. It's important for all genders to read books with strong female characters and to look up to female characters and to, you know, have them as role models. So often we think of like, oh, girls need to be reading books like that. But boys do too. And I actually read an article a few years ago. I will link to it. But it was about a guy who said when he was a child, they had to write about like a fictional hero. And he wanted to write about Matilda. <laughs> and his teacher was like, what? Like, don't you want to write about a boy though? Like, you don't want to write about a girl character. And so just this idea of if a boy takes an interest in Wonder Woman or in Matilda or, you know, in these female characters, people think it's weird. Whereas a girl can look up to like Robin Hood or Harry Potter and that's normal. But you're basically teaching boys that they shouldn't respect and look up to female characters. And then it leads them to not respect women as they get older. And so it was a great article. I highly recommend you check it out. He also does it like he tells his story through a comic strip as well. But yeah, basically boys and girls alike should be reading about female characters and looking up to them and seeing them, you know, raising boys to see women as more than just something to be objectified. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but basically what I'm saying is that Matilda is a great book. I really enjoyed reading it. 
and this is a great one for your kids. And to talk about Roald Dahl really super briefly, so he passed away in 1990, making Matilda one of his last books that he ever published. And he is an interesting guy, and Ink to Film, who is a podcast I have talked about, and I had them on my show for Secret Window, and I was on their show, and we talked about a Joyce Carol Oates story. So I highly recommend their podcast, it's so good, and it was so awesome having them on my show. But anyway, they recently covered James and the Giant Peach, which, which is a Roald Dahl book. And before they got into the book, they did a brief biography on him. So I definitely recommend you listening to their episode and they go more into Roald Dahl as a person. But I did want to mention that he was married to an American actress, Patricia Neal, who I talked about in my episode for HUD because she was in HUD. And when she went to go film that, she had she and like Roald Dahl had just recently experienced the death of their daughter. And so that was a tough film shoot because she was dealing with personal issues. But Anyway, so I did cover her for HUD. And then another totally random thing I wanted to mention is that Roald Dahl, I believe when he was in his 20s, he got dentures. Not because he needed them, but because he was just tired of dealing with teeth. And honestly, I thought that was such a great idea. Like you're gonna have to get dentures at some point, so why not do it sooner? And then you can appreciate having perfect pearly whites, no cavities. Like honestly, I almost wanna do that. That seems like a good idea to me, but anyway. Random Roald Dahl fact. And he of course has written so many famous children's books that have been adapted into movies. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, of course, which I will be covering at some point. There's a new movie coming out, but I'll probably, I mean, when the new movie comes out, that means there's gonna be three different adaptations at that point, but I will be covering that. And then the BFG and the Witches, James and the Giant Peach. I'm sure there's more, but that's all that is coming to mind right now. Anyway, onto the movie review. So this is a faithful adaptation. And funny enough, I think it took me longer to watch the movie than it did for me to read the book because the book was so short and the movie is like an hour and 45 minutes, which in my opinion, I think they could have cut like 10 to 15 minutes out of the movie and had it be shorter. And it is directed by Danny DeVito. And then he also plays her father, Mr. Wormwood. And he's also the narrator as well. And then his wife, his real life wife, plays his wife in the movie. So I thought that was pretty cute. And Danny DeVito is such an icon and he is amazing here. His role isn't huge, but he's great. And I feel like I can't talk about him without mentioning It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is the longest running live action sitcom comedy ever. His character that he plays in that show is not that far off from the character of Mr. Wormwood in some ways. But yeah, hilarious show. On a like sad note, the girl who played Matilda, Mara Wilson, I should have written her name down, but her mom passed away from cancer as she was filming this movie, but she still continued on and finished it. And so that was really sad, but I read that Danny DeVito and his wife became close with her and you know helped her during this difficult time. And I, I'm surprised she finished the film too. Like, I don't know what shots were filmed earlier and which ones were later, but it's not like I could tell a difference in her acting really, so. Yeah, really sad and impressive that she still filmed it. But moving on to the changes from book to movie. So to start, we will talk about how Matilda gets revenge on her dad. So in the movie, one of the things that makes Matilda want to punish her parents is the fact that she is six years old and yet they don't want to put her in school. They also think she's only four and she's like, no, I'm six, but they don't want to put her in school. And it's not until Miss Trunchbull buys a car from him and he meets her and sees that she hates kids. And he's like, this will be perfect for Matilda. And so he finally agrees to enroll her in school at Miss Trunchbull's school. And the way she gets revenge on him for this is, you know, before she allows him in school, is she switches his hair gel for bleach hair dye. So he bleaches his hair and then she also puts glue on the inside of his hat. And so the hat is stuck on his head. And in the book, she does both of those. They're not really pranks, maybe pranks, <laughs> but she does both of those to her dad in the book as well. However, it's not because he won't send her to school because she goes to school when she's supposed to in the book. But in the book, they have this in the movie too, where he is trying to get his son to figure out these sums based on how many cars he's sold. And Matilda is able to do it all in her head. And he thinks that, you know, she's being a smart aleck and he gets mad at her and this makes her mad and she wants to punish him. And then we also have a part, this is again, it is in the movie, but it's at a different time. But in the book, she's just reading a book in the living room and the dad is just in a bad mood. So he comes over and he starts ripping the book up. And I think those were the main two scenes in the book, which caused her to want to get revenge on him. And then in the movie, like I said, he won't put her in school. And all of this happens in the same day where she does the hair dye, then later that same day she does the hat thing. And then that evening they're watching TV, but she's reading a book and he gets upset and he rips the book up. So in the book it was spread out, whereas in the movie they have it all be in one day. And speaking of that scene when they are watching TV and Matilda is reading, so in the movie, 
He rips up her book and then he like grabs her head and forces her to watch the TV. And Matilda is getting so upset that suddenly her powers cause the TV to explode. And this is pretty early in the book, in the movie, sorry. Whereas in the book, she doesn't start having powers until like at the halfway point. And it is when she is at school and one of the kids, Lavender, has put a newt in Miss Trunchbull's water and Miss Trunchbull gets upset and then she blames Matilda and Matilda is upset that Trunchbull is getting mad at her for something she didn't do. And she like loses control and causes a cup to tip over and the water gets all over Miss Trunchbull. And after class, when everybody has left, Matilda goes up to Miss Honey. And also in book and movie, she causes the water to fall. But in the movie, this isn't the first time she's used her powers. Anyway, she goes up to Miss Honey in the book and tells her like, I'm the one that did that. I used my brain and I moved the water cup. And so Miss Honey doesn't believe her. And so Matilda shows her right there and she does it again. And Miss Honey like can't believe her eyes. Whereas in the movie, she goes up to Miss Honey, tells her that she's the one who did it. And Miss Honey wants to see her do it again, but she's not able to. So in the movie, she realizes that she's only only able to use her power when she is upset and when someone is yelling at her. So then later she goes home that night and she is like asking her dad to yell at her. That way she can practice her powers. And also in the end of the book, Matilda loses her powers. And so she's talking to Miss Honey about this. And Miss Honey says that she thinks Matilda was like so smart and had all of this unused brain power because she was in kindergarten when she should have been in like sixth grade. And so because she had all this unused brain power, it like caused her to have like telekinesis because of that. But by the end of book, by the end of the book, she is in the proper grade and she is being challenged and she no longer has unused brain power. And so she therefore no longer has her powers. Whereas in the movie, we see her still using her powers in the end. And with Miss Honey, so after class that day with the water cup tipping over, Miss Honey invites Matilda over to her house. And in the book, like her home is very like cottagey, but it is very small and she has no furniture and she has no running water and she has very little food. And Matilda finds out that Miss Trunchbull is Honey's, Miss Honey's aunt, and that Miss Trunchbull takes part of Miss Honey's checks. And then also she suspects that Miss Trunchbull had killed her father because Miss Trunchbull wanted his house and his money, even though those things should technically belong to Miss Honey, but his will is missing. And so it therefore just went to Miss Trunchbull. And so, yeah, so that's why Miss Honey is so poor is because Miss Trunchbull takes some of her money. So in the book and movie, we find this out when she goes to visit her house. Although I will say in the movie, Miss Honey didn't seem quite as destitute as she was in the book. But in the movie, after they find this out, they go to Miss Trunchbull's house and are in like her front yawn lawn, like sneaking. And then Miss Trunchbull drives away and Matilda is like, let's go inside and we can get some of your stuff that she still has. And so they do. And then of course, Miss Trunchbull comes home sooner than planned. And then they have this, you know, whole cat and mouse as they try to escape the house with Miss Trunchbull not knowing who they are, which they do succeed at. And then the revenge she gets on Miss Trunchbull is different from book to movie. So in the book, she goes to Miss Honey's house. She finds out Miss Honey's story. And then before she leaves, she asks M Miss Honey what her dad's name was and what he would call Miss Trunchbull. And then she goes home. So they don't go to Miss Trunchbull's house in the book. But then she goes home and she starts practicing lifting a cigar up in the air and moving it. And then Miss Trunchbull will teach their class once a week. And so then a week passes and it's time for Miss Trunchbull to teach the class again. And when she is there, Matilda has the chalk right on the board telling Miss Trunchbull to give Miss Honey back her house and her money, acting like it's Miss Honey's dad saying this. And this alone, is able to freak Miss Trunchable out so much that she leaves the school, she leaves her house, and she is never heard from again. And then suddenly in the mail, Miss Honey's dad's will suddenly shows up and it of, of course is giving everything to Miss Honey. And so then Miss Honey gets her home and her money back. Whereas in the movie, so Matilda practices her powers and she can do much more with her powers in the movie than she did in the book. Like in the book, she practiced moving a cigar because it's similar to a chalk piece of chalk. Whereas in the movie, she's like moving everything and learning how to do all all sorts of stuff. And so she goes to Miss, Tr Miss Trunchbull's house and she makes it seem like the ghost of Miss Honey's dad is like haunting her and tormenting her. And Miss Trunchbull is like kind of freaked out, but then she goes outside and she sees Matilda's ribbon. And so she knows Matilda was there. But honestly, like even if you find Matilda's ribbon, that doesn't explain all the floating stuff and <laughs> everything that was happening because she doesn't know Matilda can move stuff. So wouldn't she still be freaked out? That really didn't make much sense. 
Anyway, she shows up to school the next day and she is disheveled, but she's upset at Matilda and she kind of confronts her as well as all the kids. And this is when Matilda has like the shutters move and then she has the message on the chalkboard show up. But still, Miss Trunchbull still isn't freaked out and she keeps trying to harass the children. However, Matilda just keeps thwarting Miss Trunchbull's attempts. And two of these I found really funny. So for one, Miss Trunchbull, there's an open window and she grabs a kid and throws him out the window. But then Matilda causes him when he gets thrown out the window, he starts flying around like the courtyard before coming safely in through the window again. So I thought that was really funny as well as another scene where she's about to charge Lavender. Before she's able to get Lavender, Matilda has her jump up in the air and then Lavender grabs onto a bar on the ceiling. And then later when Miss Trunchbull is no longer in the room, Matilda goes up to Lavender and she tells her she can let go. And so Lavender lets go and Matilda helps her gracefully come back to the ground. And then after that, Lavender is like, I didn't know I could do that. And that scene was so cute. And the girl who plays Lavender, I didn't write her name down, but she was adorable. And that scene was just so cute and so sweet. Anyway, uh, they end up having, Matilda ends up having all the lunch boxes open up and Miss Trunchbull is just like pelted with food. And then she's out in the hallway and then like the whole school is involved and they're all like, you know, yelling at Miss Trunchbull and throwing stuff at her and chasing her out of the school. And then once again, she just leaves and is never heard from again. And so, like I said, in the end, Miss Honey gets her home back. And in the movie, she becomes principal of the school, whereas in the book, I, it was someone else became the new principal. But so Miss Honey's life is going much better. And then one day Matilda goes home. Well, in the book, she goes home and she sees her parents are packing up and they're like, we got to get out of here. And so Matilda runs back to Miss Honey and she's like, my parents are leaving. I don't want to go though. Like you need to adopt me. And so they don't do anything official. Like Miss Honey just goes to see the parents and she tells them that she wants to keep Matilda and Matilda wants to stay. And they're just like, okay, fine, and they leave. And so then Matilda and Miss Honey live together happily ever after. In the movie, she's at Miss Honey's house and her parents drive up and they're like, hurry up, Matilda, we gotta go. Like the FBI are on our tail. Which by the way, in the book, this is kind of sudden. Whereas in the movie, I did like that they showed that the FBI were watching Mr. Wormwood. So it didn't come out of nowhere. Like we knew he was doing shady stuff in the book, but in the movie, they made it very clear that, you know, FBI was onto him. Anyway, in that moment, Matilda is like, like, I want to stay and I've already started adopting adoption papers. All you have to do is sign. And in the book, the parents like had no emotion. But in the movie, when Matilda t shows her the adoption papers, the mom is like, you know, like Matilda, like I've never understood you. But then she's like, you know, where do I sign? <laughs> but I did like that she does show she has some heart being like, man, like you're just so different than us, Matilda. I don't get it. Anyway, in both book and movie, Miss Honey adopts Matilda and they live together happily ever after. And I did like this as well in both book and movie. I like that Miss Honey did not have a love interest. And I'm kind of surprised that the movie didn't add one in. Cause you would think that in a family movie, especially an older family movie, they would have been like, you know, the studios would have been like, you know, we have to have Matilda go to a conventional home with a mother and a father. And I like that they didn't do that. And they were like, no, it's just gonna be Miss Honey. She's gonna be single mom raising Matilda. And that's all they need basically is each other. Not saying Miss Honey doesn't find someone down the road, but I like that they didn't feel the need to include that. And then in both book and movie, we of course see Matilda fall in love with reading at a very young age. And there is a part from the book I wanted to share just about the magic of reading. It was pleasant to take a hot drink up to her room and have it beside her as she sat in her silent room reading in the empty house in the afternoons. The books transported her into new worlds and inter introduced her to amazing people who lived exciting lives. She went on olden day sailing ships with Joseph Conrad. She went to Africa with Ernest Hemingway and to India with Rudyard Kipling. She traveled all over the world while sitting in her little room in an English village. And I love that because as someone who loves to read now, but also as someone who loved to read as a child, like I love being able to just escape into a book. And so I could definitely relate to that. And I always love reading about characters who love reading, right? <laughs> and when it comes down to book versus movie, the movie is a great adaptation and it is wonderfully cast. But I will say the one woman who plays Miss Trunchbull, like they just made her too gross for my taste. Like, and it's gross on purpose, like zooming in on her face while she's eating and showing her mouth, like that's always disgusting. But also just like her overall look was very exaggerated and just gross <laughs> is the best way I can word it. And it honestly took away from the viewing experience because I was just grossed out by her character and I didn't like seeing her on screen. And also, even though this was a great adaptation, I am still gonna say I like the book better, partly because that's what Matilda would do because she's all about the books. And there's a part in the movie where her dad doesn't understand why she wants a book. 
And he's like, why read a book when you can get the same thing from a TV, but faster? And so even though that's not totally true with Matilda because it is such a short book, I'm still gonna say that the book wins, even though it's a good adaptation, but it seems like in honor of Matilda, you know, that's what she would want is for the book to win. And before we close this out though, I do wanna say that there is a new adaptation of Matilda coming out and I think it's a musical. Like I guess they turned Matilda into a Broadway musical, but now they're turning it into an adaptation. And so that comes out in December. And so I will probably be seeing that and do, you know, just a quick little video talking about my thoughts on that and how it compares to this movie and the book. So yeah, looking forward to that one as well. Like I said, they're doing a new Charlie and the Chocolate Factory too. So lots of real dull adaptations coming out. And then there was the adaptation of The Witches with Anne Hathaway that came out like a couple of years ago. I have not heard good things about it. Like I've heard nothing about it, <laughs> but let me know your thoughts. And if you would like me to cover that one, there's also the old adaptation with Angelica Houston. So if I cover The Witches, I could always talk about both movies. Anyway, thank you for joining me here today. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. Join me next week. I am not gonna be covering a kid's book. Last week and this week were kids stories covering Holes by Lewis Satcher and then today was Matilda. But next week we are getting more into adult content and I will be covering The Beguiled which is about a union soldier who is trapped in a school of women kind of. <laughs> That's like a very basic uh, description. Anyway, join me for that one next week. It is a good one and I'm excited to talk about it. And yeah, I will see you then. Thank you.